chapter 6, the chapter on emptiness. Then at that time, the Tathagata spoke these verse. In numerous other conceivable sutras, I have expounded emptiness phenomena in detail. Hence here, in this supreme sutra, empty phenomena I will just briefly explain as beings of slight intelligence, ignorant or incapable of knowing all things. Hence, there is supreme sublime sutra. Empty phenomena are explained only in brief. So, so that all beings may certainly know, so they may be delivered from cyclic existence. Through compassionate way, methods, and other means, I have expounded the supreme sublime sutra. The body is like an empty village or house. Senses are like soldiers and thieves. Although they live in the same village, they are unaware of each other. The eye sense runs after form. The ear sense indulges in sound. The nose sense captures numerous smells. The tongue sense always hunts taste. The body sense pure tact pursues tactile sensation. And the mental sense grasps a phenomena. These six individual senses are each absorbed in their object. The mind is capricious as an illusion. Its six senses thoroughly engross, like a man who runs in an empty village and resides there among soldiers and thieves. The mind dwells in six objects and fully knows the objects of his senses. Therefore, the mind resides in six objects and fully knows the objects of the saints engagements. Forms, sounds, and likewise smells, taste, tactile, and phenomena, the mind in motion like a bird in flight, and all six enter the sense faculties, and whatever sense it abides, it lends that sense its knowing nature. The body, like a machine, is an empty village, is without motion and completely without action. Lacking core essence it arises from conditions, arising from concepts that lacks inherent nature, earth, water, fire, and wind, abiding separately in different parts, like deadly snakes in the same den, are ever in conflict with it, each other. Of these four snakes of elements, two move upward and two move down. Moving by twos in directions and subdirections, these snakes of elements will surely perish. The earth snake and water snake perish down below. The fire snake and wind snake descend to the space above. Due to actions done in the past, the mind and consciousness depart from their abode. Gods, humans, and three lower migrators are born in existence according to deeds done. At death, when phlegm, wind, and bile have been exhausted, the body is filled with urine and foul matter. Not pleasant, it becomes heaps of worms discarded like wood at, char at the charnel ground. Behold these things, O goddess. Here beings, persons, and likewise phenomena are empty. Due to ignorance they arise. These great elements have, not be have no great origination originating from the unoriginated. They lack origination, since that which is originated does not originate. I have called them the great elements. They do not exist and do not ever exist. Due to ignorance, they come into being. Ignorance itself does not exist. Thus I have called it ignorance. Actions, consciousness, name, and form, six sources, contact, feeling, craving, grasping, and existence, too birth, age, and death, sorrow and affliction. These compromise the twelve links of dependent origination, the inconceivable suffering of cyclic existence as they operate in the wheel of life, have originated from the unoriginated. Thus, they are without origination, free from discursive conceptual thought, cut the view of self-existence, sever the net of afflictions. Brandish the sword of knowledge. Behold the abode of aggregates as empty. 
In this way, enlightenment shall be reached. I have opened the door to the city of nectar and thoroughly entered into its abode. I have utterly revealed the vessel of nectar with its juice I have just been filled. I have beaten the sublime drum of the Dharma. I have blown the Dharma's supreme conch. I have remained sublime I have rained a sublime shower of Dharma. I have ignited Dharma's supreme torch. I conquered the potent enemy, the afflictions, and hoisted Dharma's victory banner high. I rescued beings from the ocean of existence and sealed the path of the three lower realms. For being scorched by fires and afflictions without support or cooperative forces, I soothed those burned by delusion's flame, and with nectar's juice satisfied such beings. For inconceivable many eons, I venerated inconceivably many Buddhas, fervently seeking Dharmakaya, resolute in my vows. I engaged in bodhisattva deeds. I gave my hands, eyes, and legs the supreme part. The head, beloved daughters and sons, crystals, gems, pearls, ornaments, and gold, lapis, and various jewels, a person might cut and chop. All that grows in this earth, bushes and trees, grass and forest, and all the triple thousand world. If he ground them to power, powder and reduced them to dust, a mound reaching the ends of space could be built and split into three parts. If knowledge of all th the dust in, on earth, infinite units and triple thousand world spheres was bestowed upon just one being, that being would be be extremely superior. Possessed of exalted wisdom, he might count all those particles in that mound of dust. But the extent of the conqueror's knowledge cannot be known. Even the countless tens of millions of eons of the vitality of just a single moment of the conqueror's omniscient wisdom cannot be measured or gauged. This ends the sixth chapter, the chapter on the emptiness of from the King of Glory to the Sublime Golden Light.